These tips and tricks could save you a lot of money, time, and headache when building a new home. And the last one on this list actually has to do with your master bath, and this could save you a big headache if you don't know about this. Jeremy Nett, the Night Group, your favorite Austin realtor. Today, we're gonna walk through a new build home, and I'm gonna point out some of the things that I've seen come up and really cost clients a lot of time, energy, and headaches. So we're gonna go through that list today, and I'm gonna walk through this home right here so you can kind of get a good sneak peek of what to look for. And like always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I definitely wanna hear from you in the comment section if there's something I've missed or something that's caused you a pain, headache in the past, definitely drop it below. We wanna hear from you. All right, the first one on this list takes us up to the attic now this is where i've seen a lot of people have a headache with a lot of things number one you want to make sure that the builder goes through and balances the system this is one thing i've seen happen in a lot of homes well you'll be in one room that gets really no air and then another room that gets too much air and just blows out and it sucks now the second thing is make sure you know where your air filter is because here's the thing that I see happen. When you're building a home, there's a lot of stuff running through the AC when it's on, a lot of stuff. And these air filters, when you finally close on your home, the builder won't always change these. And so what happen? these things will be so full of dust, grime, and you're gonna be breathing that and you're gonna wonder why you're sick right away. So when you move in your home, check this, make sure it's clean. If it's not clean, Go and find out where your air filter is in your home and change this because this could save you from getting sick and just not enjoying your home right away. Oh yeah, and real quick, there's one tip that's gonna help you here, and that's actually to have an inspection done. Now, a lot of these builders will tell you you don't need an inspection done. I highly recommend, you know, there's two times that I highly recommend it. Number one is when the home is right before it's being sheetrocked. It's called a pre-sheet rock inspection. You'll find a lot of things in the walls, and this is a pretty important one to pay attention to. The second one is your final. Now, a lot of these builders can tell you, you don't need it, or we have a third party person of our own. I would definitely have your own third party. Now, it's gonna run you between $400 and $600 to have an inspection done, but this will definitely help. Now, this won't catch everything, because like, like I'm gonna tell you at the end of the video, there's one thing that happened to me personally, and I can attest to this, and you want to make sure you do this. And I don't know the inspector would have caught this either. So stay tuned for that. All right, the next takes us to all of your windows and everything that's going to need a sealant around the outside. Now, look, when these homes are getting built, what happens is you're going to have these windows open a lot of the time. And so you might get buildup underneath the windows from moisture or something. There might be a rainstorm and the windows are left open. So definitely when you're doing a walkthrough, pay attention to the conditions around the windows. Also outside of your windows, they should make sure that they're sealed. There should be a level of sealant around the, the window frames. So make sure that they're sealed. Make sure that the builder has them sealed because the last thing you want is get a lot of water penetration from your windows in your home. That's not gonna be fun. All right, the next one takes us into your bathrooms. And this is really important. When you're having the home built, make sure you go through when they're at that stage and go and take pictures of the walls because you're gonna wanna know where the PEX lines run. Now the PEX lines are gonna be the water lines in the wall. Now you don't wanna do this where you're starting to, you know, put something up on your wall. Maybe it's in your living room. And I've seen this happen where you'll see videos of people having water squirting out of their walls right here. And the reason why that happens is because the PEX lines running the walls. And then when you go to hammer through the wall, if you're not hitting right in the stud, you might hit the PEX line. The other thing is you want to be mindful of where in the walls your electrical lines are because there's going to be a data port line where there's a bunch of lines coming into the home and if you're nailing or screwing into those walls and you hit an electrical line you're not going to be too happy about it so go through your home take pictures of the walls where your water lines are or some of your electrical and major things are that way when you're hanging a tv or doing something you don't end up having rupture a gas line water line electrical line and nobody wants to have gas blowing in their face. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But nobody wants to have water blowing in their face or in their home and damaging everything as well. So make sure you know what's in the walls and take some pictures. That might help you out. The next one is the floors. Now this is pretty important because I've seen this happen quite a few times recently. And this is what happens. See how these floors, they're wood floors. This is all covered up. And what's going to happen is as they get closer to finishing the home, they're going to tear all of this out of the home. Right, they're gonna tear all this out so you can see the floors. And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna see all the scratch marks, damage that's been done to these floors. Now, 
workers are walking through all the time. You're walking through the home and people are bringing in fireplaces, stoves. If you look at this house, they still have a lot of stuff to put in the home. So they're dragging stuff across your floors. And what's gonna potentially happen is they scratch these floors up and then they're still gonna try to get you to close on time, but maybe the floors still need to be done. I've had clients that have closed and they have to have the floor guys come back and fix some of the flooring. And trust me, it is such a pain in the butt. Make sure you try to at least get that done before you moved in because you really don't wanna spend days sitting at your house waiting for the guys to come back and fix the floors. Staying in that same realm of knowing what's in the walls and taking pictures of where fixtures are, like lighting fixtures and things like that, is pretty important too. And here's the reason. Let's say that these drywallers come in and they just cover up a bunch of stuff. Maybe they cover up where your light switches are. Maybe they cover up some lights or something. Now you're gonna have to have somebody come back through and fish around to find these lights. Because guess what? When the electrical guys come through, they're not gonna know where those lights were because they got covered up by the sheetrock. And then you're gonna have to spend time literally going through and finding where those are, or the builder will. So pay attention to that because that could save you some time and headache. All right, the next one takes us outside. The one thing you don't want to have is issues with ceiling on the outside. And one issue that you run into is having expansion gaps in homes. Now, these expansion gaps are pretty important because in Texas, we have expansive clays and things like that. What happens with these expansion gaps is they actually feel these and they make these on purpose and then fill them with silicone. And you need to, in the future, make sure you're looking at these, paying attention and fixing these and continuing to put sealant in there. This, this is gonna allow the home to flex a little bit because we're gonna have expansion in, in the soils and things like that. But if you don't have these filled, what ends up happening is you're gonna get moisture through there. Now, these are really important to have, but you're gonna want sealant in those. That's why they're not cemented over. That's why they don't have grout. So pay attention to these. You're gonna have one to two depending on each side of the home, depending on how long your house is. The next one's pretty important. Make sure that all your gas dub outs and all your gas lines are fully, fully sealed. The last thing you wanna have is a gas leak out of one of these outside ports. Now these can get run into pretty easy because this one's sitting outside because this is for the outside barbecue that you're potentially gonna put in the future. Now if one of these gets hit or cracked and you have gas spewing out of this, not gonna be good for you. So make sure these are all sealed up pretty tight. As promised, we are back in the master bath. Now, a lot of people are gonna have these walk-in showers, right? And this one's really important. It's gonna lead me to my bigger issue something that happened to me personally. So see these little risers right here? Having an inch to two inch riser right here is really important. That way the water does not spill up, up over and into your bathroom. Now, most of your bathroom is tile, but you also have wood on connecting to your walls. So this is a good way to get really good water damage if you don't make sure that there's a gap or a lip right here. So this is really, really important. I personally had this happen where there wasn't a good one inch lip or rise and so water kept spilling over into one of my bathrooms and kind of became a problem so make sure that you have a good lip or rise right here all right talking about sealing in your home and keeping things nice and sealed make sure that this little lip right around the home where you have this fascia board and your wall are nice and sealed all the way around your home you'll have up under your eaves of your home you may have little gaps that you don't know about so definitely make sure that those are all sealed what's going to happen is we live in texas or maybe you don't live in texas but that's a good way having a gap into one of these eaves this is what an inspector should catch but having a gap in these eaves number one can give you water penetration in the home secondly you're going to get guests and guests being mice and potentially squirrels and you really don't want those in your home or in your attic because it could cause a lot of problems especially if they're up there chewing into all your electrical items so keep that in mind the next one here can get fixed and found by your roofer but you don't want to run into any roofing issues on your home so if your inspector is going to look at this now they may have somebody come out and look at the roof and make sure everything's good but you want to make sure the roof's pretty solid now just you're getting a brand new home but you still can run into issues with maybe nails or things like that so one thing you might want to do while the home is being built if it's raining go hang out in the attic and see if there's any leaking in the attic now sometimes you might get some light leaking that doesn't leak through into the home but sometimes you could. Now I had personally happened in my, one of my homes is one of the downspouts on the upstairs coming to the downstairs was going across 
was pointed across the shingles and what happened is it allowed water penetration under one of the vents so make sure you have somebody definitely check out the roof make sure even if it's a brand new home you want to make sure your roof is pretty sound there's no gaps or leaks anywhere all right the next one this is the one this is the one that was a pretty annoying situation that happened to me and it happened the very first day i moved into my home so these are the clean outs right here and so this is where the water for your, all of your home comes out, right? So it's all of your waste water's coming out, everything right over here. You can see the one right for the city, right, right there. Okay. Now what happens is as these homes are being built, these might be left open. And this is hard for an inspector to find too. So I recommend that you ask the builder to snake the main drain. Yeah, the, the snake the main drain before you close. Cause I had this happen. So the builder ran the water, ran the water, ran the water in all the homes just to make sure there was no backups. What happens is sometimes people throw things down those drains. If that little cover gets left open, well, what might happen is the fact that Coke bottles and things get thrown down there. What happens is, and this is what happened to me, the very first day we moved in, we ran a bunch of laundry. So a lot of water went down at one time. What happened then, remember I told you about that lip in the bathroom? Well, the whole bathroom filled up with water. Water came in out of the, the toilet, out of my shower, out of my drains, everything all into my master bathroom. The very first day we moved in on a brand new build. Now, your inspector might not be able to catch that. That's a tough one for them to catch. So make sure you have the builder drain uh, snake those because my builder said, oh, we ran the water, we ran the water. And then they had to come back the next day and have crews come back and water restore my home. They had to go through, have a serve pro come in and fix that. And it was a big, big headache for a few days. We ended up having to tear out sheetrock, carpeting in the home, fix baseboards and all that stuff and make sure there was no mold growing in my home, all because these little cap got left off for a while and somebody threw a Coke bottle down there. So make sure you have somebody snake the drain first before you run any heavy loads when you move in and definitely make sure that you have a good gap in your shower that way you don't have water coming up over that lip. Now that if I would have had that lip in mind, I would have actually had no water in my master bedroom, which is where we had to replace a lot of carpet and walling, which was not fun. This one's pretty important too. know where your gas shutoffs are and your electrical panel to shut off all the power and know where your water shutoffs are as well. Now these are right gonna be pretty much to the curb of every home, but these water shutoffs are really, really important. Why? Because if you need to shut off that water, you hit that, that main vein or you hit that water line or whatever, you wanna be able to shut the water off so you can stop all the water coming into your home. So know where your water shutoff valves are. Okay, Jeremy Knight, The Night Group, what do you think about this video? Was it helpful? Was it not helpful? If you had some issues that have come up and maybe something I didn't cover in this video, drop a comment below. We want to hear from you. And make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.